Hello chums and welcome to yet another Sheepish Look At. And today we're going to be taking a look at Sea of Thieves, Rareware's recently newly re released uh, pirate adventure game. And I'm going to put things really bluntly here folks. This is a Marmite title. This is a game you're either going to love or you are going to hate. You will either love the sense of exploration, the sense of sailing and with your buddies and camaraderie, while in an interactive world where you can basically do voyages and get interrupted in real time by other pirates, or you're going to hate the lack of content and um, la basically overall lack of missions and repetitive nature of the mission structure. And honestly, for me, I personally love this game. I've been playing a stupid amount of hours on it. I've been streaming it practically daily now on uh, Twitch TV and uh, it's it's just been an absolute blast for me. Now to start things off basically as I said yes you will either love it for its sense of adventure and uh, basically what the game is trying to be or you will hate it on the lack of content and I'm gonna talk about the lack of content first because that is the big up e big elephant in the room because for me there is a lack of content. There are only three major mission types that you can complete. However, I don't feel that this game has a lack of things to do. And that's largely because it takes place in a PvE VP environment where everything is really in interactive and dynamic. For example, uh, to talk about the basic mission types, you go through gold holder missions, which you go from island to island to island, either solving riddles or going through adventure maps to find treasure chests that are buried. Or you have the Order of Souls missions where you go and you're basically on a big hunt for skeleton pirate crews in order to defeat their bosses and take their skulls back for a reward. Or there's merchant sailors where you need to go and basically pick up supplies, whether that supplies mean picking up snakes, pigs or uh, chickens, or gunpowder barrels, tea, etc, etc, etc. And basically, they all revolve around going from island to island to island to island, which is a very repetitive process, or albeit relaxing process if you're playing through, in my opinion. It, it really depends what sort of mood you're in, really. If, you're, if you want to just sort of see action, action, and action, well, you're going to find yourself bored. But if you want to have a lot of calm moments in between the tenseness of battles and seeing other pirates on the ocean, then uh, it's just a bloody good time, what can I tell you? But the problem is they are there are currently, and I, spe I, I specifically strongly say currently because this is a service-based game, things can change in the future, but there are currently only these three mission types to deal with, which means if none of them for you, you're going to be kind of, you know, left in the water a little bit. And uh, while the PvP element is a strong one, and obviously, like I said, the game is very interactive and dynamic where other pirates can easily come up against you and start shooting you mid-voyage. Um, if you don't enjoy the base gameplay at all, you know, it's, it's not really going to matter too much because the PvP is a little sparse. And that's largely because there's usually, I think there's a maximum of six ships per server. Which means you can go for long stretches of time without seeing any ships whatsoever. And honestly, it's all RNG with that because I was in a match last night where uh, me and my friend, we were going on straight up to a place called Marauder's Arch to take care of these three pirate captains. Mid-fight, we noticed behind us that slowly in a distance, a galleon was approaching at a very rapid pace. So we immediately abandoned the voyage temporarily to go straight back to our sloop. As we got to the sloop, the galleon managed to creep up alongside us, and we were like, oh god, this is the end. And they managed to board us, but a good three or so of them, there's four total players in a, in a crew, by the way. Three of them landed on a swoop, on a swoop, sloop, sorry. And we basically killed them and sailed off as quick as we can. And this started a three hour chase across the entire map as we kept outsmarting the, the galleon in every turn doing the exact right moments and movements to try and outsmart it and uh, defeat them with them boarding us multiple times and us defeating them. As we 
continue getting chased, eventually we obviously got sick of it because, you know, after about an hour or so, you're going to be like, Jesus Christ, when are these guys going to give up? So we go to a nearby outpost and we start dropping off uh, our loot as quickly as possible, but we aren't able to drop it all off. So we come up with a plan. What if we go to the nearby Plunder Valley, go into a cave and hide the loot, then directly go into the galleon and attack it, and then if they manage to sink us, no worries because we can just go straight back, pick up the loot with no problem. And this is the sort of dynamic gameplay I'm on about. Like, the game is built for building pirate stories. The game is built around having adventures with your friends, having these massive drawn out epic battles. But again, they're, they're, it's low on content and it's a lot of people who will not, like just doing this dynamic stuff won't be a big enough draw to people. In fact, there's no lin there's no linear vertical progression in this game at all. It's all horizontal progression, which basically means as you complete each mission for each of the factions, you'll gain reputation increases with them. Eventually, when you'll be able to get pirate legend, which I'm not far enough into the game to say what that is yet, because I don't actually know. But as you get these uh, factions leveled up to a maximum of level 50, your quest will start getting harder and harder and harder, and. Uh, your only real reward will be gold, which you can then spend on cosmetics for your ship or cosmetics for your main character. There is no way to improve your stats, there's no way to improve anything like that, which a lot of people will be complaining about. I personally love this because it's just, I, I, I'm not, it, it just makes things fair really between all the players. But the problem here lies in that there's not much content in terms of cosmetics at launch. There's really not enough options for each of the players. Which is very disappointing to be honest. I am I'm I know they're adding a lot more stuff as time goes on but right now there really isn't much stuff to deck out your character with so you're going to come across a lot of samey character types and uh, that's basically all I can really say about that. It's, it's, it, it, it's kind of underwhelming in terms of the cosmetics department, which is a shame because that's the big thing you're trying to get, you're getting gold for. Um, outside of all that as well, there's also the Kraken in the game, which unfortunately, within my stupid amount of hours playing this game, I'm still yet to come across it. And it seems to be completely potluck whether you come across the Kraken or not. It's just It just seems to be a random attack. And uh, I've seen people talk about playing the game for about two hours, come across the Kraken, and they found it very, very easy. And I don't know how true this is, because obviously I haven't fought it, but apparently the Kraken is a multi-phase sort of battle, so the more times you fight it, the harder and harder it gets. And so far, nobody has been able to kill it. Uh, it, it basically just seems to run away so far. I don't know... If there is a way to kill it, but there we go. The Kraken's in the game, but don't expect too much because at least your first encounter with it is apparently quite simple and easy to deal with. But uh, overall, I've just been enjoying the hell out of this game. Uh, soundtrack is really good. There's not much soundtrack because it's mostly just ambient music. But when the when the soundtrack kicks in, it just, it's really it's got that it's got that rareware feel to it. I feel. And the visuals also have that sort of distinct style that you you associate with Rareware as well, where everything looks nice and stylistic and cartoony. And oh my god, the water in this game, guys. Oh, oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> the best way to put it. Um, but overall, do I recommend Sea of Thieves? Yes and no. Uh, it's like it, like I said, it's a Marmite game, so this one's going to be a really hard one to recommend because some people will be like me and they will enjoy the game despite its limited content for hours upon hours upon hours upon hours on end. But if you are not looking into the in limited content, you're not going to enjoy it. If you don't, if you don't like the limited content it has to offer at the time being, this game isn't one to recommend. It's a really interesting one for that reason alone. So I, my best advice is to either pick it up on a price drop if you're wary, or try it through Xbox Game Pass if you're playing it through the Xbox. Uh, that's my best sort of bet. I mean, you could just take the dive and pay the full price like I did, but 50 quid for a game that you may or may not like may be a bit steep. So I recommend trying it first if you can. 
but overall, I've been enjoying this game. I'm going to continue playing it. Uh, I'm going to continue streaming it daily on Twitch slash The Three Dragons, if anyone's ever watching, you know, planning on watching that. And with that, that's basically it here. So thank you all for watching. Hope you all, uh, this gives you a decent look of the game. And uh, I shall see you after. Bye-bye.